everyone is buying Nvidia GPUs. As much as we might hate it, numbers don't lie. So if you are shopping for Nvidia GPUs, or you might just be curious about GPUs in general, then you have landed on the right video. Here we are going to go over Nvidia GPUs, we are going to talk about their price, performance when it comes to gaming, and how they compare against each other in a tier list. Because let's be honest, if you were here just for performance, then we know who would win. Yes, I am looking at you 49 Anyway, before we begin, let me explain what the numbers and letters mean. If you know that, look at the timestamps in the video description and skip this part. Now about the letters, here we have the RTX, which are the newer models. Before that we had GTX, and everything before that, that's too old, not even worth mentioning. Basically, RTX cards have ray tracing, and when you activate this feature, the games look more realistic, with better reflections, better lights, and stuff like that. And then we have DLSS, which means that the GPU can generate frames, even if it can't actually make that many, it can generate fake frames. So that makes the game feel a lot smoother, even if the GPU doesn't have that much performance, and GTX doesn't have that. That's the main difference. And then the two first numbers mean the generation, basically 40 is the newest, 30 is the last series, 20 is older than 30, and so on. And can you guess what came before 20? Yes, you are right, the 16 series. Very logical, I know. It's stupid but blame Nvidia, not me. And before the 16 series we go back to the track with the 10 series. And when it comes to the two last numbers, think of them as tiers. The higher, the better. 90 meaning the best, 80 a bit worse, 70 even worse, and so on. And you might have seen some letters in the end, like Super and TI. Well, that means that it's better. Not as good as one tier above it, but better than the variant without the letters. Keep in mind that TI is better than Super, don't forget that. How much better? Well, we will get into that in the tier list, and let's start from the older GPUs, moving towards the newer ones. That leaves us with a GTX 1050 with 2GB of RAM, and even though you can find it for $120 new, I will still rate this at FF tier, don't get anything below 8GB of your RAM, believe me, not worth it today. Now the GTX 1050 Ti, it has double the RAM, and it performs about 30% better, and it might sound good, but it's still a really bad deal, even though it's just $10 more than the 1050. And an F tier for this one, just because of how much better it is compared to the normal 1050. Let's look at the GTX 1060, and here you have the 6GB version, so try to go with that. That is 25% better than the 1050 Ti and is about $350, which is not good, but it has quite a bit of performance and still it is F tier. Now the GTX 1070, it comes with 8GB, which I recommend that kind of RAM, but costs about $400, which I don't recommend spending, so F tier, just because it is 25% better than the 1060. Now let's move on to the GTX 1070 Ti, which is 14% better than the non-Ti version, but also it's about $250 more expensive, so let's keep this card close at F tier. The GTX 1080 is about 10% better than the 1070 Ti, and the funny thing is that I once found it for around $200 cheaper than the 1070 Ti, but still it's a stupid GPU, but E tier, just because it is better than the rest. Still not worth getting though. And the GTX 1080 Ti. It is 10 to 25% better at gaming compared to the normal 1080. Can you believe that? And you can get that for the low low price of $1500. What is this really? I just found a couple of 1080 Ti's and they are stupidly priced. Anyway, FF tier, just because why would anyone with common sense buy this? And without wasting even more of your time, Let's move on to the 16 series. And we start off with the GTX 1630, which we are skipping, not worth getting. It's too slow, F tier. The only reason it's not FF tier is because it has 4 GB of RAM and it's cheap. Now we can finally move on to the GTX 1650, which is 20% worse than the 1060. And for some unknown reasons, I didn't think GPUs would get worse. But here we are, F tier. So now let's move on to the 1650 Super. It is priced at around $230 and it is 22% better than the non-TI version, but still F tier, not even worth considering with that price. Which leads us to the 1660, which is priced at $220, but has 3 to 15% more performance than the 1650 Super that we mentioned before, and that earns it the E spot. This takes us to the GTX 1660 Super, which is also F tier in my opinion. It is a bit better and it is a bit more expensive, 
not worth getting. The same goes for the GTX 1660 Ti. It is more expensive when it comes to the price because it is $280, but it is a whole 2% better than the Super version. So F tier, stupid. Why would you only make it 2% better? Nvidia, F tier. Anyway, now scores will start to get a bit higher since we have RTX, which means the games look better and they are smoother, even if the GPU is less powerful because it has ray tracing and DLSS. So the RTX 2060 comes with 6GB of VRAM, it performs 10-15% better than the 1660 Super in gaming and it goes for around $210. You might get about 10% more performance with the RTX 2060 Super. So I would put the normal 2060 at E tier and the 2060 Super at D tier. And when we turn around to look at the 2070, which is 2% better than the RTX 2060 Super for 200% of the price, what a bargain. F tier. Not really double the price, but a lot more expensive. Not worth it. The 2070 Super. Okay, it is 10 to 20% better, but with a price tag of over $600 it will remain at F tier. Now the RTX 2080, it's hard to even find it and even when you find it, it's at $1000, so FF tier. And it gets worse, the 2080 Super, it has 3 to 7% better performance and okay, it is at the same price, but the TI version, it's $1100 and it's only 4 to 8% better, which I don't like, so everything F tier. Now things will start to get more interesting with the 30 series GPUs which will be ranked higher since they are more relevant. Let's start with the RTX 3050, it's 5% better than the 2060 but because it has more RAM and because it's around $220 I will put it at C tier, it at least has 8GB of RAM and it's not that expensive. Now the RTX 3060 and you want the 12 gig version. Don't forget that, it's around $280 and it's up to 25% better than the 3050. And if you are willing to spend $330, you are going to get the TI version, which is another 20% boost over the normal 3060. I would rank the 3060 at A tier just because it has 12 gigs of RAM. And you might need that, but it's quite a bit slower and because of that I will put the 3060 Ti as well in the A spot just because it has quite a bit of performance. Now the RTX 3070 and it's true it's faster at around 7 to 15 percent but it comes at the price tag of 370 dollars which is not worth it when you consider that it has less RAM as well but do your own research you might even like this GPU it's not much more expensive and it will perform better beat you. Sadly the same can be said for the RTX 3070 Ti which is only 6 to 9 percent better than the non-TI version and it's $70 more expensive. Now you might even like these cards because they are faster but I didn't like either of them that much. So B tier for me just because they are reasonably priced for the performance or better said they are somewhat reasonably priced. And when it comes to the RTX 3080 well it's true that it has 12 GB of RAM and it's true that it's up to 15% better than the RTX 3070 Ti but do you know what else is true about it? It's around $850. F tier. So let's move on to the TI version. So the RTX 3080 TI. Pretty much the same story. 5% better but cost $1000. F tier. Now for just $50 more you can get double the RAM you need with the 3090 but honestly in the real world when playing games it performs about 5% better than the 80 Ti. If you are not playing at 4K that is. So F tier for the 3090 as well. And the 3090 Ti it's 8% better than the normal version but it's around $1,500, which is stupid considering that we have the newer generation of the 40 series cards, F tier. Now the RTX 4060, it only has 8GB of VRAM, but still outperforms the standard 3060 by 10%. It can be found for $300, but just because it still loses to the RTX 3060 Ti, for me, it's going to be B tier. Now the RTX 4060 Ti, you can get that card with up to 16 gigabytes of VRAM and that will be 20% faster than the normal 4060, but it will cost you $450, so it is more expensive. Some people might say it's worth it, some don't agree with that. Me personally, right now, I don't think you need 16 gigabytes of RAM, so for that the reason this card falls short of A tier for me. B tier for the TI version. The RTX 4070, it is 20% faster than the 4060 Ti and it has 12GB of RAM and so far so good but when you look at the price tag of $600, yeah, B tier. The RTX 4070 Ti has a similar story. It is 14-17% to 17 faster but also it's $200 more expensive than the standard 4070. So for me, C tier. 
Now the RTX 4080 it comes with 16 GB of RAM and it is about 20% faster but it's over $1000 so I cannot justify the price. C rank for me. And the final GPU, the king of performance, the RTX 4090 with 24GB of RAM with 20% more FPS in games compared to the 4080 with a price tag of $1600. Where do we rank this card? Well, I hate this card and I know you do too because it's pointless. But I think it deserves a B spot for now. The only reason for that is that at least it's the most powerful GPU out of all of them. So you at least have the bragging rights, I guess. If you want the best, you are getting this, that's the point. And the reason why there's no S tier GPU is because there's no GPU with good enough performance and with a good enough price tag. And the only GPUs at A tier are the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. And the 3060 and 3060 Ti don't have that good of a performance, but at least they are cheap. And you know the saying, there isn't a bad Nvidia GPU, there are only bad prices for Nvidia GPUs. Now to get the deals that I found you might need to look closely at the websites, but they are out there and I am talking about new parts. Keep in mind that you can and will find better prices that are a lot cheaper than what I have shown you if you search in UAC, Amazon or eBay, but keep in mind that unless it's like a big sale, they are used, it will tell in the description. Now me personally, I am against used GPUs for a couple of reasons. They are really good when you know what you are doing, but honestly speaking, you probably don't know your way around used GPUs. You can't tell if it has been heavily used, you can't tell if it has been damaged internally, you don't know how much more life it has inside, and if you are not a tech nerd, it will be hard for you to identify those problems. Heck, even the nerdiest of us get scammed a lot when it comes to GPUs, so for those reasons I haven't mentioned the used GPU prices. Unless you know the guy that is selling the GPU, it's not a risk worth taking, but in the end of the day, you can make your own choices, that's just my opinion. And don't forget that the market can change every day, so make sure to check the prices again. One thing that is not likely to change is the performance, so you can always rely on that info to make your decision. And don't forget to like this video if you found this video helpful. If you want to see more videos like this, or if you want to watch more tech related videos in the future, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. If you want to ask anything about any GPU or any other PC part in general, feel free to comment down below, I reply to every single comment and with that said, I will see you in the next one.